Thank you so much for the compliment, Dumi. Now kicking us off for the show, 10 years ago, Tashriq de Villiers' life was completely down in the dumps. All it took was a chance, one chance, and he grabbed that chance with both hands. And a decade later, he is a two-times Fleur de Cap nominee, performing artist and rapper. Can I call you Ricky? You can. Yes, Welcome definitely. to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Now, um, I know it does sound quite dramatic when people say 10 years ago, down in the dumps. But mm. compared to where you are today, we need to celebrate the journey. Yes. So can you just take us back to uh, little Tashriq and, and how, you did, <laughs> how you were growing up? Sure. So um, Tashriq grew up in Woodstock, the um, last born of five kids, um, looked after by a single mother. So that's already on its own is quite difficult, you know. And then the area didn't help because it's gang ridden, drug infested, mm. you know. We have all the wrong role models and so forth. But I found myself looking up to these guys and whatever. But mm. then I always had this thing in me for the arts because my brother was a singer, Fasih. He was a lead singer of a group. Wow. So I always went to his shows. I always used to support him. And that led me into singing. Mm. So primarily I'm actually a singer. Yeah. This is quite interesting. I mean, you didn't just stumble into becoming a singer. Everything is a journey. Yeah. But you as a man, you also have a very strong, interesting journey that I think right now so many South Africans can identify with. After being the last born of five children, your father unfortunately decided to pursue a life of his own, yeah. leaving you with your mom and your siblings. And then you looked up to the street gangsters, yes. the violence. Yes. Um, they had the flashy cars, Pela. <laughs> they, had, uh, they were the who's who dressed nicely. Yes. And you were like, you know what? That's better than nothing. Yeah, definitely. And so that was my go-to thing. Yeah. So I was like, guys, how did you get this stuff? And then like, this is what you need to do, that's what you need to do. There enters a life of crime, drugs, gangsterism, and absolute chaos. So can you just talk to me about that stage of your life? Well, um, How old? You were a teenager at the yeah, time. Yeah, I was a teenager, yeah. Sure. We just lost, uh, we just lost um, the Greenpoint track where the Klopse, annual mm. Klopse competition was held. So we just lost that and we moved and had to go to different stadiums. I was like, I don't want to go to different stadiums. I'm used to winning at that stadium. Mm. So I'm going to leave this Klopse thing and I'm going to be with these guys on the streets and whatever. So it was chaos, as you mentioned. Literally chaos, gangsterism, crime, the things I've done in my life. I'm, yeah. I ask forgiveness for my Lord every day, but I'm not ashamed of it because it built me into who I am today. Mm. And this way I can inspire the next kid in the ghettos, in the slums. Look here, it's not where you're from, it's where you're going. Wow. If you have any passion or desire inside of you, make effort on that. And that's going to bring you somewhere, definitely. I love that. I mean, you did say that you were a singer yeah. um, and you're part of the Klopse. So yeah. for South Africans right there who are not, you know, living in Cape Town, <laughs> who might not be familiar with what the Klopse is, yeah. I remember you from back in the day. You yeah. dressed me up <laughs> as one of the <laughs> happy Klopses in yes. my stripes. So can you just break down that culture, that tradition, and what led you to want to go back? Yeah, so Klopse is huge in, in Cape Town because it's the one day that we had for emancipation as slaves when we were brought to the Cape. So this day of emancipation, it was a day of celebration for them. So we live this, we relive this every year. And, but there's actually a formal competition that happens at the stadium. Wow. Where there's like 20 something different categories of items that we performing against each other, you know? So I became, later on, when I got the, the hand that, that pulled me up yeah. from a guy, Shahid Simons, and another guy, Tariq Blechner, to help me, they literally came to fetch me out of the gang, eh? And the gang knew already, if they see that car, they must say, Ricky, run because they knew that, oh, wow, okay, yeah. so this is kind of a different type of gang wars. Yeah. Uh, the the clubs up yeah. versus the gang that you were a part of, yes. being able to now fight for territory, yeah. that is Tashriq. They're gonna lose me, the gang's gonna lose me because they know whatever I do, I'm the front runner, you know? Wow. So when the clubs got me, they took me to the clubs karma, as we know it, and literally the rest was history. They were like, write the song, what lyric will you put on this beat? What did that then do for you, being able to make the jump between a life of chaos, a life where you have to turn, look behind you at yeah. every moment, to a family structure, people that accept you, people that want to push, nurture that creativity within yeah. you. What did that do for the man inside? Right there, that changed my life. Mm. From that moment, and when I sang that competition with that team that year, and I won, ah. and we won the whole competition also. Right there, that changed my life. I was like, guys, I told, I told my gang, guys, I can't anymore, man. I can't anymore. Wow, I'm that's very powerful. So let's talk to you being the creative that you are, the incredible talent. I mean, a two- <laughs> 
time Flirter Cup nominee within the same category. Yes. The first ever. You were, you were the first one in history. <laughs> so Mzansi, essentially, let's bring it back to home. If you're not familiar with all things Flirter Cup, it is essentially the um, musical theater, yes. I could say, awards that we hold. And um, within one category, you were nominated twice for two different roles that you played. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, that was for, one of them was Danger in the Dark with David Kramer. Mm -hmm. So he directed that piece. It was a, it's a, actually a remake of a, of a thing called Poison, mm -hmm. also a play. So I played a supporting lead character, Lucky. It was amazing because I could tap into the gangster Tashrik, because that's what Lucky was, you know. Wow. And then Auntie Using Mo. your real life experience yeah. to inform the art. Yes, and then Auntie Mo was obviously more comical. Because Mark Luttering, you know how he does, eh? Yeah, we so, love Mark Luttering yeah, here. Yeah, so I played the double role in that show. I was Pastor Jansen and um, the Ben 10 guy, mm. uh, Glenn Davids. People will know me from the Bath scene, <laughs> where I lost my T-shirt and things. <laughs> but, I mean, of course yeah. we'd know you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the two roles, yes. That was the two wow. stage plays, both of them, Flair the Cup nominations, Best Supporting Lead Actor. I mean, you are just such an inspiration, truly someone to be marveled over. I also want to touch base with you. Um, you also played, a, again, another huge fan of our show <laughs> and a family member, Yusuf Daniels. Yes, um, Living Coloured. Yeah. Yeah, the best-selling book in South Africa. They Love made it, it um, Lukman Adams directed it, mm. into a phenomenal stage play, telling, oh, basically expressing the book yeah. into the arts and in, onto a stage play, you know. I, I played him. Yes, you so did. So it was, it was actually amazing to, to play a character that's not fictional or that's not made up, you know. He's actually sitting there watching me play. Oh, honey, the pressure. <laughs> Imagine playing Palisa Tembe and Palisa Tembe <laughs> is right there. And I love Yusuf Daniels. He's an easy man to yeah. please because he's just got such a huge heart. Yes. So thank you so much for coming through and sharing some of that talent with us here on Afternoon Express. You've got a rap performance for us at the end of the show. I do. And then I'm just going to be touching base with you, wrapping up with Chef Dumi about what you've got in store for us moving forward. Thank you so much, Palisa. Oh, Pleasure. love it. Now, it doesn't matter how you start off Mzanti in life or whatever pit you might find yourself in. Tishrik is a true testament that faith and believing in yourself can only bring about light, but make your life a success and a happy one indeed. Now, on social media, Mzanti, this is what we're saying to you. Happy Friday, fam. So what's the one word to describe your plans for the weekend? Use that hashtag, Afternoon Express.